Mrs. Phillips, thank you for your time. It's good to be talking to you. I just want to confirm, you're the National Research Officer from Family Voice Australia, is that correct? That is correct. And your organisation was part of the submission to request a refused classification for Human Centipede 2, is that also correct? We were one of those making a submission. Yeah. Um, the Commonwealth Classification Review Board put out a media release some weeks ago inviting interested people to make submissions and we were we took up their offer. Now, I haven't seen um, the film myself, any, any version of the film. Have you? No. Um, in South Australia it has not been shown and I do not think you need to... Uh, partake of poison to understand from authoritative sources that it is poison. Uh, we were acting on the basis of a report from the British Board of Film Classification, which was quite detailed in its uh, comments on the film, which it decided to refuse classification to in June. And I noticed you, you mentioned that on your website. I, I'm intrigued. Do, do you not find it interesting, however, that... Um, some people may find it strange that you haven't yourself or your organisation seen the film, therefore how can you actually dispute the classification of it? Well, we don't use that uh, argument in other areas. Um, for example, if you see an egg and you smell it um, and it smells rotten, do you have to eat it to find out that it's rotten or do you base it on other evidence? There are all sorts of things that are censored in our community. Uh, we're not allowed to drive while drunk. Um, all sorts of things are banned because it's considered by society not to be in the public interest. And this is a similar area. So the film was originally an R, uh, sorry, yes, an R rating, I believe. That's right. What was, what was wrong with the, the R rating? Because to me... Um, or to many people, that may be a very clear understanding of what the actual content of the film is. Does an R rating not indicate sufficiently um, that it's only suitable for a particular audience? Well, as the guidelines make clear, there are some films whose extreme violence, including sexual violence, go beyond what is acceptable in the community that you've got to draw the line sometimes. And this is one of those films where a line has to be drawn. It's interesting. I'm, I'm 32 years of age. Should, should, should I not have a choice whether or not to see this film? Well, should you not have a choice whether or not to drive on the left-hand side of the road? If, if you want to drive on the right side of the road, shouldn't you have a choice? Well, I can't, uh, I can't, I can't you, drive I on... I mean, the, it's the same principle. Well, not, not necessarily. I can't drive on the left side of the road because that's against the law. Exactly, and it's against the law to show films which are deemed by the classification board or the classification review board, where there's a dispute, that uh, breach the guidelines. But so it's the same principle, exactly. However, the, the first classification board um, didn't um, refuse classification of the film at all. They gave it an R18 rating and subsequently it was screened Overturned in... Overturned on appeal, yes. This happens all the time in courts. A lower court may make a judgment and various people may appeal and a higher court may overturn that judgment. Now, this often happens with films. There are many cases where a film is given a certain rating, say R, by the classification board and the film's distributors may say, hey, um, we want a, a lower rating of MA. And often that's upheld by the review board, so it works both ways. Would you have appealed the um, classification if um, they did not ask for submissions? Uh, well, I understand that's a common practice. In the past, this has been the case. But uh, it, it's not my job to, to make the decision. It's in this case, and in many other cases, the review board invites people, if they have a particular interest, to give arguments for or against. And, yes. of course, this is what happened. The... Um, Distributors, Monster Pictures, gave a, a very detailed argument in favour of retaining the R classification. And we and others gave reasons why it should be refused classification. I, I think you can't get fairer than that. 
However, and however, ultimately you're... the board made its own decision based on its own viewing of the film. I mean, we we gave various arguments, but they viewed the film and they decided what what was relevant in the code and the guidelines. It was the is the classification review board aware that um, yourself or the organisation haven't actually viewed the film? Well, since uh, I'm in South Australia, it wouldn't have been possible for me to view the film. It no. just wasn't shown here. So, in, in your submission, is that is that stated that because you, you haven't actually Look, seen we, the film? We, our submission was not based on our views at all, as I've explained. We simply quoted what the British Board of Film Classification said after viewing the film in Britain. But and so uh, that was our argument. <laughs> it wasn't based on whether or not we'd seen the film. We were presenting the arguments put forward by the British Board of Film Classification. But some people might say that our arguments you know, should be our own in, in Australia. It shouldn't be based on international um, uh, responses because there would but be other there, would, there may be other um, uh, countries, for instance, who don't ban the film. So why not take look, that look, side the of, view, of, of the approach the as other well? View, the other view was certainly put by Monster Pictures, and in the in the end, it was the members of the review board who had seen the film who decided on the basis of their viewing the film what was relevant. So really, we were just putting the case that had been put by the British Board of Film Classification. So, the so, final yeah. decision was not made by the British Board of Film Classification, it was made by the Australian Classification Review Board. Based on the evidence submitted by no, yourself through the, their, well, through the British uh, Board? They yeah. based it on their own viewing of the film. Obviously, they saw, they had previously listened to both sides of the case, mm -hmm. but ultimately they made their own decision based on what they saw when they viewed the film. There was a press release placed by Monsters Pictures about an hour ago, which um, I brought to your attention, which I think you may have since read. Is that correct? I have indeed, yes. There I noticed that I'm rejected because I'm a middle-class woman. Beg your pardon, sorry? <laughs> Uh, one of the things they attacked me was because I was a middle class woman. And uh, I'm interested, if I was upper class or lower class, would that make it okay? It's, uh, there are quite a few ad hominem arguments. Uh, they were of, obviously disappointed with the decision. What, one of their arguments is that they have a concern over the level of influence that uh, Family Voice Australia has over what the, Austra the adult public and I'm quoting here, of this country can or cannot view in a cinema or in the privacy of their own home. Well, Are you we surprised with your own level of influence? <laughs> Very surprised, because ultimately it's whether our arguments are good or bad. It's not because of who we are. And ultimately, as I said, the review board members made their own decision. They had certainly heard the monster pictures argument. And uh, we don't win the case every time. I wish we did. Do you know what percentage of cases you don't win at all, Rosalind? No, no, because we, there are very few cases, as you probably know. The review board doesn't meet very often. It's only when there's extreme examples of films which breach the guidelines that uh, we get involved. And so uh, your uh, objection to the film... Um, sorry, I should say your organisation um, speaks on behalf of families, is that correct? Well, yes, because survey after survey conducted uh, by governments and similar bodies have found that the general mainstream community of Australia is very concerned about violence in media, and in particular sexual violence. And I think this is um, one of the big concerns about the Human Centipede 2 film. It is there not a, an, an option whereby there's a simpler solution where if, if you find a film may not be um, to the liking of, of your organisation or those who, or, or other people, that they could simply put notification out to advise families not to see the film, but other people still can? But this, it's not a case of whether it's you like it or whether you're offended by it. The really basic issue is does this film have the potential to cause harm? And if you read the British Board of Film Classification comments, that was what they saw to be the main issue. Does this film, which effect effectively 
uh, is based on sexual arousal by human torture and would reinforce that in viewers, uh, is this going to be pro-social or does it have the potential to cause harm by reinforcing somebody who has this obsession to think that this is legitimised by the film and therefore more likely to act it out on others? This is the the point of the film, or the point of our objection, that As there is harm. However, the... the it is not to do with offence, it's to do with harm. Taking that into consideration, the film, I think for a period of two or three weeks, was screened, I think in Brisbane? I could be wrong there. Uh, certainly it was filmed in Brisbane, yes. Of which I'm unaware of any harm that has been documented. Well, you wouldn't know, would you? But, but studies but, do show that people who uh, commit these crimes, there's a strong link with pornography and effectively this is what the British Board of Film Classification said it's torture porn there, there is a, a, a final point in the um, press release that says that Monsters Pictures intends to resubmit a modified version of the film to the classification board yes I'm sure they're, they're likely to do that because that's what happened in Britain and finally a film with 32 different cuts was approved with an 18 classification there so it's likely that that would happen here as well. And if, if that was the case, that, as, as we speak at this moment, wouldn't concern you further? I don't approve of the film, but I'd be very glad to see that uh, the original film remained banned. So if it was necessary to make 32 different cuts to uh, meet the classification guidelines, so be it. Just in closing, that the banning of the film do you think could actually have an um, opposite effect to what you're, you're doing, which is, is that it creates more awareness of the film and makes people illegally download the film or purchase it overseas from countries oh, that, that haven't claim, banned it? Mm, that claim is often made. Uh, on that basis, you would never ban anything. But the reality is that up till uh, last Monday, the DVD was available, able to be bought in shops around the nation right. and when it's there it's much more likely to fall into the hands of people who have problems i i know that anything that's against the law you find people who are willing to break it that's not just with films well just... also anything with the law I, I guess there's always there's always a percentage of people who would but who would be, having who would it break. against the law does act as a disincentive and does mean that fewer people will access it i know that monster pictures uh, first of all, they, they got a delay in the review of three weeks so that they'd be able to show it all over the country, except for South Australia, by um, saying, come and see the film before it's banned. In other words, they were reaping lots of money by promoting the film, probably knowing that it breached the guidelines. Well, I mean, otherwise, why would they say, come and see this film before it's banned? Aren't they saying that because it's based on the fact it was banned in Britain? No, I think it was based on the fact they knew that the review was coming up at the end of November. Because that's why they said it here in Australia. Come see it before it's banned. Just finally, if I and may. I think Sorry. that's pretty hypocritical of them now to complain that what they were marketing the film on has in fact happened. <laughs> in, in a sense, horror films over the years have been marketed on, you know, the version that they didn't want you to see. Exorcist had an uncut version that was finally released and, and mm. that. So... Uh, uh, I wouldn't say that there's anything new in the, in the promotion of that. I think it was particularly pertinent this time because they knew and so did their market know that the review was coming up. Does it disappoint you that there are people who want to see the film who now can't? Well, as I pointed out, I'm very glad that uh, people can't see this film which promotes um, sexual arous arousal by torture. Yes, but does that... Uh, so, for instance, myself, whether or not I was going to see it, I'm not too sure, but uh, I would be disappointed myself that I now can't see this film. Does that, does that change your thinking at all in terms of, of your request to refuse no, clarification, that there may be a large amount of people who actually say, well, hold on, we should be able to see this film? Well, I'm sure people who um, are obsessed with... Uh masturbating to torture would be disappointed. 
Well, I, I, I don't think that's, that's a fair comment because there I'm are... not saying everybody would, but that's the reason the film is banned. It's a basis. The reason is harm. Yes, that, that's based and on, that's on the British, mm, British Board's decision, correct? And I believe that that would underlie the opinion of the Australian Board. That the impact is so high that they consider this film should be refused classification. In fact, that's what they said. Are you aware if anyone can... Oh, I should say, are you aware of the options that are available to actually dispute the review? The, I believe, to all intents and purposes, the classification review board is the final decision. And in the press release by Monsters Pictures, it says that... Um, uh, Monsters Pictures would like to draw attention to the fact that two ultra-conservative Christian groups, one of yours is mentioned there, can have this level of influence over what the adult public of this country can or cannot view. Are you... Well, they're wrong. They're wrong because we didn't decide. It was the review board and they had equal opportunity and I believe used expensive lawyers to put their case. We simply wrote what we believed were relevant arguments and... Uh, emailed them to the board. Yes. Well, well, they're more referencing your influence over the decision. Are you surprised... We, we didn't influence the decision. It was the facts. I mean, it wasn't our views. It was the British Board of Film Classification. So did they have too great an influence? But ultimately, of course, it was the members of the board who made their own decision after seeing the film themselves. But you, in a sense, I want to... Do, do, you, do you have to admit that you must have um, some influence in the decisions, if I may, because I'm of the impression that your submission that you put didn't contain any new information. It was merely the British Board's submission that you submitted. Is that correct? We used parts of the British Board's Did you um, add your own? comments to relate to the Australian guidelines. So we related the comments made by the British Board, which of course have a different set of guidelines, they were referring to various scenes in the film and we related their description of the scenes to parts of our guidelines. And it was clear that according to our guidelines, those scenes should be refused classification. Yep. Does it concern you that uh, the film can be purchased on the internet and shipped to Australia? There are ways in which you can get around all sorts of laws, that's true. But I believe that it's a good first step to refuse classification. I mean, there are some people who will break the law no matter what, whatever the law is. Yes, but... But that's no reason not to have a law. So, um, will you be making any attempts to prevent the film from being imported if it's purchased overseas? Well, that's a matter for police to um, do the best they can to see that the laws in this country are upheld and... If customs find such films, then presumably they would be confiscated. Well, Rosalind Phillips, I should thank you very much for your time and um, for taking um, uh, your afternoon to have a chat with me about that. Thanks, Red. I appreciate that. Thank you for your time.